G'day and welcome to the Mind Your Body Show, episode number 44. I am your host, Jacob Andre, and today I am talking to Yoga Kaya. So if you'd like to know more about living your life's true purpose, stay tuned. G'day and welcome to the Mind Your Body Show. I am your host, Jacob Andre, and this is the episode prelude for episode number 44 with Yoga Kaya. Now, before we get into it, I want to let you know where you can find us across the internet, starting off with our home base, which is our website, www.themindyourbodyshow.com. There you can find all of our podcast episodes, as well as read our blog. One week we release an episode, the next week we release a blog article, and you are going to love the stuff which we are sharing there if you are into minding your body. Now, if you're someone who likes to watch episodes, you can find us on YouTube at The Mind Your Body Show, and I would highly encourage you to subscribe there to make sure that you do not miss any future episodes to be released. And in addition to our episodes, we are also releasing little mini takeaways, our biggest takeaways from the episodes with our guests over on YouTube. So you can find them there. They're short little one to three minute clips. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a podcast without being on the world's biggest podcasting platforms, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And a huge shout out to all of the people who have given us our five-star ratings and reviews. Please keep them coming because they allow us to get into the hands of more people and spread our message, the message of our amazing guests. Now, in addition to that, you can find us on the two biggest social media platforms being Facebook and Instagram. On Facebook, we are The Mind Your Body Show. And on Instagram, also The Mind Your Body Show with underscores in between each word. And most importantly, that is where you can discover and find or follow Yoga Kaya. You can find her by searching yoga underscore K-A-J-A. And there she is sharing a whole bunch of stuff around living her life's true purpose, which is yoga art and veganism. Now, this was a very, very interesting episode. In this episode, you are going to learn how Kaya discovered yoga for the first time, how she got into yoga, and how she grew her Instagram really quick to create a life which gave her passion and purpose, something that she was not getting in her HR life. So she turns an adversity in life into an opportunity and it is completely inspiring. You are going to love this episode with Kaya. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Kaya, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. So before we get into it, what have we interrupted today in your day? Oh, not much, really. Uh, it's morning here in Norway. Um, and later I'm going climbing. So excited for that. But yeah, not interrupted much. <laughs> that sounds that sounds really interesting. Tell me about that. What you're going climbing, and, and especially in a place like Norway, that would be amazing. Yeah, it's indoor though, so <laughs> I'm not really. I just started. Um, it, I think it's really fun, and I find it like easier than I thought because I think the yoga practice is helping me being like flexible. I can be like a spider <laughs> climbing up, but I think um, I need to practice more before I go outside. <laughs> yeah. What is the climbing like in Norway? Is it like world class? Uh, I have no idea. I just started. Like this is my second time going, so I did not know. <laughs> okay, so what has been the most challenging thing that you found from climbing? Then is it like the the finger grip strength is it the forearms are burning is it like what have you found most challenging from climbing I think um like my upper body strength like my arms are not that strong and also my hands like I get like it's quite painful inside the hands so I need to like grow some thicker skin or something <laughs> <laughs> and get some calluses on those hands and then like toughen them up so what have you found has helped you with your climbing from your yoga? Is there anything that you've taken from yoga that has helped you with climbing so far in your two sessions? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like being flexible. I can, you know, just um, put my foot probably much higher than if you're not that flexible. Because I think maybe men are like dragging themselves up with like their arms and shoulders, but I'm like using my legs and like, <laughs> to do that so yeah 
Well, from what I know about climbing, you are supposed to be using your legs mainly. Your arms are just sort of more there for support. Is that correct? Yeah, maybe I, I don't really know how to climb <laughs> that properly, but I'm just doing something. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. So I think you're doing it right. I, I'm pretty sure you're doing okay. it better than most. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> One of the first things I like to ask the guests when they come on is how do you mind your body? Now, I know you're probably going to go in and talk about yoga because you're famous for yoga, um, but a bit more specifically than just doing yoga, how do you mind your body? So um, what do you mean mind my body? Like take Look, care of my body? I, I, I'm going to have to be careful here because I'm going to have to be aware that English is not your first language. So yeah. <laughs> maybe some of the little nuances in the words I'm going to, have to be more specific with, but how do you look after yourself? What do you do to make yourself feel good physically, emotionally, spiritually? Mm. Um, well, I do yoga, uh, <laughs> which is a big part of my life. Um, and also I'm quite careful about what I eat. Um, I have a vegan plant-based diet. Uh, so I try to eat healthy and uh, drink water yeah see some sunlight if I can up here in Norway it's not always that easy <laughs> like to travel <laughs> but can't really travel these days either so <laughs> it's um but yeah it's uh, mostly yoga vegan diet and like being mindful of like stress levels and getting enough sleep and yeah and I think you embody that quite well in what I've seen on your Instagram page. You do do all those things and you demonstrate that. Um, and so if anyone is interested in following you, of course, we'll link all this up in the show notes and we'll talk about it at the end. But Instagram, K-A-J-A underscore, oh, sorry, yoga underscore K-A-J-A. -A. Um, yeah. But let's go right back. I want to know the young Kaya, how did you end up where you are now in life what brought you to this moment in life like what was life like growing up and how did you get to where you are now um God, I feel like that's such a big question but um it's been a long journey um like looking back now I remember when I was like eight nine years old I was like sitting in my room I had this little like yoga book and I looked at the pictures and I was like, oh, that looks so cool to be able to go into those poses. And, but I didn't do yoga then. Um, I actually started, like, I did some dancing and gymnastics. And then I, I was a cheerleader. So we were actually in, uh, like, the world championship and did some camps in the U.S. and stuff like that. It was really fun. So I think because of like gymnastics and cheerleading, then like yoga, the poses were like easier for me, it came easier. Um, but yeah, I didn't get into yoga for like um, 2018, I think. Um, so I was like really stressed out at work and I didn't have any energy to like work out or do anything I was just really drained um and then I decided to try yoga and I just like fell in love with it like I was there every day I feel like <laughs> practicing um and then so I was in HR so I was like sitting at the computer all day and I didn't feel like that was like my purpose or ful fulfilling for me. I felt like it was, um, you know, just work that I had to, you know, make an income, but it, it wasn't giving me anything else. And so what happened was actually um, that the company I was working for were um, like another company was buying our company. So, um, and it was like an, IT company so they didn't really want uh, like HR people and marketing people and sales people <laughs> so um, I was offered like a, I don't know what you call it um, in English but like a package to like resign <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So um, I was like, uh, hell yeah. <laughs> I get paid to leave. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I was like paid for to not work there for like five months. <laughs> so I had a few months where I was not working, but I had an income. Uh, and I thought, you know, I just dived into this yoga practice and I was practicing daily and I loved it. And I was thinking if I could like, and not worry about money, what would I do with my life? And I was like, uh, I want to do yoga. <laughs> I would do yoga anyway. So um, yeah, so I went to Thailand um, for a month and took a yoga teacher training and got back home, started my own business and yeah, it just rolled from there um and it went like i grew my instagram pretty fast i've always loved being creative you know painting taking pictures um so that part was really fun for me as well um but then obviously covid came knocked on the door and i had to uh you know yoga was not allowed like my practice was allowed but not teaching so it became difficult being a yoga teacher um so the past year I've been back in the office doing HR so that was really hard <laughs> 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 trying to like um run your own business and like Instagram and everything and also working a full-time job with in a field that you don't really you know it's not a burning passion <laughs> mm -hmm. and then also I moved um and renovated a whole house by myself so it's just been a lot this <laughs> past year <laughs> your house is amazing by the way actually I've seen this um I feel like I've been part of this journey for the last few months because yeah. I've seen the progress of the house and I'm presuming this is where you're sitting right now in your yes. house yeah yeah, so if anyone's watching this on YouTube, you can see that this is the house, which if you scroll back through your Instagram, you'll see all the, um, the posts. I think maybe it was stories. I can't remember if it was posts or stories, yeah. but you were sharing some of the journey of that. And it, yeah. it's very creative. I really, really like your fan. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, when I was, um, you know, buying this house earlier uh, this year, I decided that I wanted to, live in a more creative space uh, earlier I have like had very much like black and white gray like minimalistic apartment and now I just wanted to add some color and just get creative with it so it will inspire me to you know create art and yeah and more thank you for bringing up yeah, well, I'm glad that you brought up art because you do share a lot of your um, art. You do create art, and I'm presuming you've laid a lot of it around your own house. Um, so, tell me about your art style. Um, colorful, I would say it's much colors, um, and I'm not sure if I have a specific like style. I've painted a lot of different things. Mm both like um like animals and buildings and just nature and people and abstract so but I guess now I'm like going towards um maybe more yoga-ish like universe and spiritual paintings so I'm diving into that a little bit I'm actually just grabbing my phone right now because so you're talking about your art and I saw on your story. Um, I just want to have a quick look and see if I can find it recently where you put up a picture. I'm going to quickly show this on the screen real quick. I don't know if you can see that, but you put this picture up of some little diagrams. So what's the chances of some art yoga where you're doing art of a pose? Is that what that is? Um... I've actually been asked that before, if I can do some yoga art. And just to clarify, that was not my drawings <laughs> on Instagram. It was, I'm taking a yoga course. 
to like dive deeper into vinyasa yoga right now so that was like me doing homework <laughs> but um i think uh, yeah i would definitely uh try making some yoga art yeah That'd and are you fun. selling it is this something that you can purchase your art yeah um i'm selling my art through um it's called prick art which is in english like dots art prick is like dots okay. so um, it's um yeah a company that's like um collective artists like um, a group of artists that is like not that well known but yeah, creative environment. So that's where I'm selling my artwork. And so do you know what the website is where people can purchase that? Um, I think it's prickart.com. I think so. P-R-I-K-K art. Okay, yeah. and we'll definitely link all that up in the show notes as well afterwards. Yeah. Because <laughs> it is pretty cool and it's very, very bright and colorful. I really like it. Mm, thank you. <laughs> um, so let's go back into the yoga stuff and so you're talking about um i actually want to go right back to that moment where you picked up that yoga book and that's quite insightful for a young girl to pick up a book and go oh, i really like this i want to get into this at some point and then for it to come back around that's pretty yeah. cool yeah i feel like it's uh, been like full circle now that i kind of um or like my soul or whatever you want to call it like knew what i was going to be doing and that really like interested me as a child like um yeah yoga and I was I had these like um, incense sticks like um, <laughs> around my room and <laughs> always been like loving nature and I was painting ever since I was like I, young I never went to like art school I just always loved like you know paint and so I feel like I just kind of lost myself into like what a society and the world tells you to do. So I'd like had to like do this whole education and study and the, you know, the smart thing to do. But when you're a grown up person, <laughs> you have to do this. And then I kind of came back to my, myself as a young kid, like, what do you really want to do? Like, what do you actually like? And if you like died tomorrow, would you be happy like living this life? Like no one knows how long they're going to live. So might as well just, you know, do what you actually like. Yes, that's so, um, I don't know what the, so I was gonna say so wisdomful. There's, there's so much wisdom in that. So what would your ideal day look like? are you living it are you living what your ideal day is most days um yeah now I am I'm getting back into it um the past year I've been like in the office like I said so uh just from August I've been like back to yoga full-time so it's been quite busy catching up everything that's been like on hold um so a normal day would be like it's it's so different like every day is very different and I love that that I don't like wake up and know exactly this and this and this and rush into traffic and like it's like today I'm like climbing and I'm able to go and then in a time of the day where it's not that many people there which I love <laughs> and then I do I teach yoga I have um, different kind of classes like private classes private classes and um more like corporate yoga and then I have like uh, at the dance studio um and yes some evenings I like to paint I don't really watch that much tv um if I do it's more like documentaries on something that I can learn or listen to podcasts or like trying to always learn new stuff read books so yeah, it's it's a very um, variation, I would say in my it's not a, like one normal day. It's yeah, it's all very different. <laughs> if it's nice weather like today, maybe I'll take some pictures and like 
because in Norway you can't really go outside and enjoy the sun every day it's like one day of the week at least now <laughs> in <laughs> fall it's like it's nice to go outside and use the sun <laughs> it's it's a very pretty country and from what I've seen on your pictures I don't know maybe you're only getting these one random shots every now and then but they, it seems to be always beautiful yeah, well, it's not always beautiful, I would say, but I do like to, you know, make sure that when I'm taking the pictures, it's uh, nice lighting and stuff like that. So <laughs> I have to plan a bit more in Norway than if you're like in Thailand, you can just go to the beach and take beautiful pictures every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come back to Thailand, but let's go extend beyond what you were talking about when you were a child and then your teenage years and you talked about doing gymnastics and dancing and you said to me you said to me previously that you went to the US and you're in California for some um I, I won't predict it but tell me a little bit about that how old were you when you went there and what were you doing um I went there in 2014 so I was studying HR and management and uh, so it was a part of my I went to UC Berkeley for a semester to study um, so that was uh, like one of the best years of my life probably I really loved it there and that's also where I became vegan because it was so many like vegan options there and I didn't really even know what it was until then and I've always loved animals so for me it was just like what why haven't I been like vegan before so yeah uh, I loved it in Berkeley but that was after my whole like my cheerleading career was like in uh, when I was around like 16 17 18 so I was younger yeah and so well, tell me a little bit a bit more about being vegan because I've tried it several times to do vegetarian and vegan and yeah. <laughs> I find it so, so like sometimes I feel like I'm eating an entire forest because I'm just like I eat a full meal and I'm like I'm still hungry oh, give really? me some like protein that's you know like animal based that's going to fill me up um, and then there's other times where I just I just I struggle with the variety and knowing what to cook so how do you feed yourself in a way that fills you up one and two gives you variety night after night day after day um I get that question like all the time <laughs> um for me it's just so easy because I've been vegan for almost eight years now so um and I do eat a lot of the same things uh, but you don't have to I'm just that like simple when it comes to cooking I don't really like spending a lot of time in the kitchen <laughs> and I know what I like so I usually just go for like oatmeal in the morning and smoothies and salads and like mix up like different kinds of salads but you can do I think you can make pretty much anything like you get hot dogs and burgers and every meal you want to make you can make vegan now because it's so many options but it depends on where you live too in some countries it's more difficult to get the right kind of products I would say mm. what do you say I think I've seen you post about this on your Instagram what do you say to people when they say why are you eating um, fake meat that looks like meat oh uh, yeah <laughs> for me it's just such a weird question because it's um, I became vegan because it's, um, I love animals, so it's an ethical, like, if you can choose to, like, not kill someone <laughs> and have, like, the same meal, then why wouldn't you, kind of, so it doesn't matter to me what it, like, looks like, it can, or what it's called, but as long as no one gets hurt, um, good. <laughs> so what's it what do you put in your salad so give me because i've got my little go-to salad which i'll talk about in a moment but what yeah. do you when you say i have salads and i'm presuming sort of like lunchtime what do you put in your salad typically um it's a long list <laughs> <laughs> it's uh like salad like the green stuff 
the base and then it's um whatever i have like um cucumber um, like now i have to really think how to say this in english <laughs> tomatoes corn um, hold on you did good were you struggling with to hmm? tomatoes were you struggling with tomatoes with how to say that in english tomatoes yeah, that's good. Yeah, tomatoes, tomatoes, same kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> as long as you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but I think all the normal stuff um, that you can, like every vegetable, you can probably have in a salad, whatever I have in the fridge, and chickpeas or maybe some kind of like fake meats, like chicken is stuff or cheese ish or yeah dressings and uh sun-dried tomatoes <laughs> <laughs> and yeah everything <laughs> okay so I'm going to tell you what my typical salad is and I had this I've actually got this for later that I'm going to eat a little bit later um this is my go-to salad so I'll have a base of cos lettuce um so that's just a type of lettuce um spinach then, so those two greens are usually my staple. Uh, it used to be iceberg lettuce, but I just find chopping it up it's too hard. It's easier with cod lettuce. Um, but then from there, I'll add in cucumber. Um, and then pretty much that's it. Like that's the only green stuff. But then on top of that, I will then put cheese um, and I'll put mayonnaise and olive oil and usually some avocado. And I feel like if I don't have the cheese and mayonnaise, I could just, it's too bland and boring and dry and I need the mayo to just like make it taste good and I need the olive oil to give it that wet kind of taste so yeah. where does that sit in terms of your veganism level of quality um I would say that I have probably like um two kinds of vegan mayonnaise and like aioli and different dressings and pestos and I love um, just uh, lemon juice. Um, so I think you can get a vegan mayonnaise or whatever you want to have on your salad. You can have that just in like a vegan option. And maybe if you have like, if you taste both of them at the same time, you would be like, no, I like this better. But for me, I've been vegan for like eight years. So I can't remember what it actually tastes like. So for me, it's good enough. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize you could get <laughs> vegan mayonnaise. And I suppose you can get vegan cheese too, can't you? Yeah. You can get vegan anything now. Like eight years ago, you couldn't. It was like very difficult to be a vegan. Like, yeah, I think there's another, yeah. like a butter that I like. It's called Nutilex and it's like a vegan, no dairy, I think, version. And I actually really like it. It's a real nice um, butter thing. Yeah. But there's, yeah, there's so many different options. And I suppose it's about just going out there and just trying new things. And what you said actually about the try it next to the other things, chances are you're probably not going to enjoy it because you're just simply not used to it. But if you mm. give yourself a week, um, then you, you know, just commit to it for a week. I think your taste buds do change within a week. I reckon they change within about three days. You need yeah. at least three days. And then that three to seven day period, you kind of, change to a point where you go okay this is all right I don't mind this and then you continue on with it yeah yeah and for me it's like is it worth it you know when you think about all the like the pain and the suffering and the whole like impact on the climate and your body and the animals it's just like no it's just for me it's not worth it I can have something that maybe tastes not like the best but it's like good enough and also, I think it's proven that like cheese is addictive. So like sugar. So <laughs> if you don't have it for quite some time, you don't really crave it that much either. It's more mm. of a like you're so used to having it that you feel like you do, but it's it's like a cheese addiction. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's my problem. Maybe because I'm always eating cheese that I'm just addicted yeah. to cheese. I didn't realize that. <laughs> You need to get, but, go to like cheese rehab or something. Yeah, 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 true. 
I actually don't eat bread. And so that's always been one of my issues because a couple of years ago, uh, 2014, I got really stressed, chronic stress for a long time and mm. just got burnt out. And my body, I went to a naturopath and he said to me, um, you know, like you just got to get some balance back in your life. And he said, try giving up gluten. And at the time I was sort of left and went, what the heck is gluten? I didn't even know what gluten was. And so I went away and Googled it and realized it was in everything that I ate. And uh, as I, it took me a long time to get used to that, like months, um, you know, and probably a couple of years ultimately to really get rid of all that stuff that I was eating, that wheat and pasta and bread and all that kind of stuff. Um, But that seems to be quite common as a way of filling up through a vegan and vegetarian diet. So that's something that I have struggled with. But at the same time, what I noticed giving up the bread and the pasta and stuff was that I did eat a lot more vegetables, Mm. a fair bit more meat too, but particularly vegetables. And my whole body changed. It was like I lost a couple of kilos just from doing that. My whole face even changed and become sort of thinner. Um, When I look back at old photos where you're just more full around the cheeks. And I, I think if people are willing to give themselves a few months, then you can change your diet in that way and absolutely love and find anything to be able to make to eat. Yeah. Yeah. I actually don't really eat bread um, either. Um, I just feel like my body doesn't like it. (laughs) So um, no, I don't really eat bread and pasta. If I eat pasta, I have like pasta that is made of um, lentils or peas or something like that which has like a higher level of proteins and not gluten. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's good tonight. So what does a typical dinner look like then? Is it a salad or is it something a little bit more extravagant? Uh, very often it's a salad. <laughs> yeah. But um, if I have like friends over or having guests that maybe I would do lasagna or some kind of um, vegan burger and yeah, like pretty much anything. I can make a pasta made of like not gluten. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, I think you can get so creative. Like I have many cookbooks, which I'm horrible at using, but it's just so many options if you actually take the time. I also like making more like uh, soups, especially now that we're in Norway going towards winter. It's um, getting colder and it's really nice with some like hot vegetable soup or pea soup or yeah, something like that. That's a good idea. I never think of soups. I always forget about them. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so let's go back. So we've gone to your teenage years. You went to, and then later on, you went to California and you were doing your cheerleading and all that stuff. And you said to me previously that you spent some time in Australia. So tell me about, as I'm in Australia, I want to know more about your time in Australia and what you thought, where you were in Australia and what you thought of Australia and sort of what you were doing here. Yeah, so um, after I was finished uh, studying HR, I um, decided that I really, like, I missed California and, like, the summer and the warm weather, but I wanted to try something new. And also, one of my best friends went to Melbourne to study. Um, So I thought that I could get some, like, work experience on my resume so I took an internship in Sydney but first I went to uh, visit my friend in Melbourne so I was there for like a month and then I moved to Sydney and it was really hot that day I came like (laughs) with two big suitcases and they were like 42 degrees I don't know if you use 40 Celsius yeah. yeah yeah Um, it was so hot and I had nowhere to live. (laughs) I was just standing there like, oh my gosh, (laughs) winter in Norway. And yeah, but, um, I found a place to live. Uh, I lived with a really nice, um, girl from, uh, Sydney. Um, and then, uh, I took an internship, an HR internship at the Star Casino, 
So I was there for nine months ish. And yeah, I, like Australia is beautiful. Like I loved traveling. I wish I could travel more because I think it's different when you're uh, working. Um, if I was just like visiting as a tourist, I would probably see more, I feel like, but it's a more, um, it's a different way of working in Australia than Norway. It's more like hierarchy. It's not that like flat structure. So it's more, it's very like you go to work at like 9 a.m. and everyone leaves at five. <laughs> but in Norway, it's more like flexible. So yeah, it was different. <laughs> yeah, really, I didn't realize that. That's really interesting that yeah. there is that, yeah. So what did you like better, Sydney or Melbourne? Um, I didn't get to see that much of Melbourne, actually. So I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's They're a bit like different cities. I feel like mm -hmm. Melbourne is maybe more um, art vibe. Yeah. And Sydney felt really big like I was having a little bit of a struggle commuting from like one place to the other I first I um lived in like Bondi Beach because I was like oh that's nice you know by the beach but it, it was really it was a long commute to work to yeah. get it to you know at the start so I moved closer <laughs> later <laughs> So that was in 2016. Yeah. Yeah, 2016. And so you're back in um, Norway now and you have been through your HR job and you've got this awesome payout to leave the job and go and do the stuff you love. And so now you're doing all this yoga. Um, are you still, did you say you're still working in HR a little bit right now? Uh, no, I, I did the past year. I worked like full time, uh, but um from august this year i've been 100 percent back to yoga <laughs> yeah. yeah and so what is the number one thing that you get most people sort of ask you for advice about or come to you what's the biggest challenge that people say they have uh, when they come to you for yoga um people have all sorts of different questions but um i would say usually they go into yoga because they have some sort of pain in their body that they feel like, or maybe they heard from their doctor or physio or whatever that yoga would help to, you know, fix their neck or back problems or whatever it may be. So I get a lot of those kinds of questions and also that they're not like flexible enough to do yoga, which is just not that's, that's why you do yoga because you need to work on your flexibility and you know uh, well I shouldn't say that's why I do yoga because it's obviously many reasons but people that are not flexible should definitely do yoga more than those who are like super flexible <laughs> so what with yoga what what is it that you like the most about it what what is the number one thing that you that it feeds in you um i think it has changed uh, in the beginning like um like i said from when i was younger i like just liked looking at the pictures you know i found it like really cool that you could like get into all the poses and stuff uh, and i was it was more like physical for me that I wanted to stretch and get stronger and do like cooler poses and stuff like that. Um, and now the past, like definitely the past year or so, I've been more into the like spiritual um, side of yoga. Um, Cause yoga is so big. Like you, maybe some people think it's only like warrior poses or like a few poses but it when you get into it it's just huge I feel like you can just never 
learn everything about yoga because it's so much um the whole philosophy and history and um the yoga sutras and the ethical part and it's it's so big so for me it's it has um like the meditations and just quieting down like managing stress and it has been like or become a bigger part of my yoga practice now than just the physical part you just said something and i want to touch on that because it's something i find really interesting with yogis and that is um, part of my practice and so one of the things that i came across while i was writing a blog and i was doing some research on the benefits of yoga was mm. the terminology that yogis use and so they will say that they're going to practice yoga but typically if someone's going to a nut to a gym to do weights or to do running or yeah. to do some form of like crossfit type session whatever it might be notice that my words were to do to do to do so they mm -hmm. go to do something and so it's almost like a challenge or something they have to do whereas yeah. yogis would typically and even pilates i think a little bit but yogis will say oh, i'm going to practice yoga or i'm going to you know go to my practice mm -hmm. and by changing that terminology it becomes not something that really even has an end point where okay, if I do this for 12 weeks at this time frame, I will have achieved this or I want to achieve this by next year or whatever. It's more along the lines of I'm going to practice and there's no end in sight. I'm just going to continue to practice and practice and practice because I enjoy being in the moment. I enjoy the process rather than the result. And there is ultimately not really any end result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. It's, um, it's no, not like a goal to become like the perfect yogi or you're not you're never like at that goal you can always like develop further into your pose or like mental state and it's always like, like a practice that is even like everyday life is yoga practice you know just practicing not reacting in a certain way if people like stress you out or if, if you're feeling more like um, angry or whatever feelings may occur you you're kind of practicing yoga when you focus on your breath and still your mind and it's a practice that you do for your you know your body and your mind and spirit it's it's not a competition I always say that to my students that you know if I go deeper into a pose it's like we're just at our own level and this is my practice and it's your practice and don't compare yourself to everyone else because it doesn't matter where I am when you are it's just like focus on yourself so I get all that but is there a time when you try to challenge yourself and see how far you can go and what you can do um, particularly with your body through your yoga practice yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but um, I try to do it like mindfully. So I'm not just pushing and then um, ending up with like some injury or hurting myself. It's more like uh, I find it like fascinating to see what the body can do. Um, so I always try to like push myself and like see Oh, uh, like learning new poses and stuff like that. But it's more for my own sake that I. It's fun to like see uh, improvements or like how the body's changing and stuff like that. Mm. We talked about the U.S. before, and my experience with the U.S. and yoga is that um, I think Americans love to niche upon niche, and they or niche or whatever, however you want to pronounce it. But I say niche. Uh, and so I was in Chicago a couple of years ago running a workshop at a yoga studio talking about movement competency and development um, of that. And I joined a class uh, with one of the instructors afterwards and it was called rocket yoga. And I think it was like a form of yoga that, you know, had again, that sort of been niched down and um, ultimately it was all handstands. It was the most difficult thing I've ever done, like physically, my hands were so sore. My shoulders were burning. The balls of my feet were so sore because I was trying to do handstands up on the wall so many times and falling yeah. back down that the balls of my feet were just aching. 
mm-hmm. and it was it at the same time was one of the most fun experiences ever yeah. but I follow a few yogis for, that I met over there during that trip and uh, some of the stuff they're doing is it's like yoga they're like yoga athletes I never even knew that was a thing um, yeah. but these yoga like there should be a competition for it because some yogis <laughs> are phenomenal <laughs> Yeah, I I think it's um you know as yoga has become more popular, it's uh, become many different kind of yoga styles. You know, you hear goat yoga, wine yoga, beer yoga. You have every kind of yoga, but it's like, is it really yoga? You know, at that point, it's it's just not yoga anymore for me. It's it's not about that, you know, inner mental practice moving into stillness it's moving into craziness or something yeah. else like it's just it's something but I'm not sure if it's yoga <laughs> yeah 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 for sure I really like that come back to that stillness and that oneness within yourself that's a good way to put it fundamentally that is yoga yeah uh, so in terms of like where it all started for you and that teat dot uh, not so beyond the, the young girl reading the book so when you started and you decided you were going to sort of become a yoga instructor and you were in Thailand how did that come about like what made you decide in did you go to Thailand to do the teacher training or were you just there and thought oh, I'll do this what the heck like how did that all happen um so uh, I stopped like working at that job in like maybe August ish and I went to Thailand in January. So I like, uh, I think I knew like right away that I wanted to like go all in with the yoga. I remember telling my mom and she was like, oh my God, here she goes again. Like <laughs> getting her crazy ideas. Like I said, oh, I'm moving to Australia. <laughs> like, oh, no, again. <laughs> Cause then I get an idea. I'm like, I want to do it like now. <laughs> So I like started my own business within like a month and doing all the preparations and and looking into what kind of teacher training I would wanted to take and preparing, reading a lot of yoga books, um, growing, growing my Instagram and taking pictures and doing all sorts of research on that subject <laughs> and um, spending a lot of time on YouTube. <laughs> And then I went to the teacher training in January. Is that so January of 2020? 2019. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. talking about research, I did try to do a little bit of research. So I tried to scroll right down to the bottom of your Instagram feed to see what the stuff was like at the very beginning. And that's where it, I think it took off. Is it around 2019, January, when you went to the, the yoga training in Thailand that you started your Instagram? Uh, I started it uh, right away, um, like fall 2018. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, that next summer was when it really like took off um, because it's so much easier taking pictures in Thailand, you know, making <laughs> pictures beautiful. And um, so, yeah, that was when I were like really... Uh, yeah, start like growing my Instagram. So how did you do that? So because your Instagram is massive, you've got a huge following and it looks quite um, nice and neat and it's well designed. Did you have any formal training on growing your Instagram? And uh, No, uh, I just, uh, like I said, like always loved being creative and taking pictures. Um, I think it's very like fun to um like be colorful and like the visual stuff so it came like natural like to me to do um and i watched like a ton of videos on youtube and stuff like that and like did my research but i didn't take any like courses or stuff like that i just tried and like see like saw what works and not and yeah did every like so, if I came came across, I was like, okay, I tried this, I tried this, I tried this, yeah. And it looks like now in more recent times, uh, at the time of recording this in um, September 2021, um, mm-hmm. you 
have started to get into some endorsements where you're taking photos in different yoga attire. Has that come about because of you continually posting? And, and what, is, what is all that? What, what's happening with those partnerships? Oh, the retreats and stuff? No, the clothing. So there were some paid um, partnerships with clothing. Oh, I think you had yeah, yoga tights on and stuff like that. Um, yeah, uh, it, it came, I would say it came pretty like um, probably already in 2019. Um, I got like the first um, offers. So I've been working with different brands uh, for since the beginning almost, but lately it's been more, I would say. And yeah, so that's fun because I would like take the pictures anyway, but it's, it's nice when I can work with brands that I actually enjoy and yeah. Yeah. And so you mentioned the retreats, what's happening with them? Cause I've seen a few of them particularly lately, uh, where you're going uh, with Lamin. Please correct me if I'm saying this incorrectly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've known each other for like, we actually started studying together like 10 years ago. And that's when we met. And then we had like a similar path where um, we were in the like corporate like office life and realized that's not like what I want to do with my life and he uh, is a wellness coach uh, and me being a like a yoga teacher we kind of um, work really well together uh, so uh, he contacted me earlier this year and um, said that he was doing this camp wellness camp and um yeah so we did the first one in june and we just got back from the second one now in september at a really nice resort full like wellness experience with um uh, physio uh, yoga pool time workouts nice food and yeah it's been really yeah. nice it so looks I amazing think, yeah <laughs> I feel like the Instagram has like given me so many opportunities, people reaching out and yeah, it's, it's really fun to watch. For anyone who wants to attend one of these um, work, these uh, retreats, how do they go about that? Um, well, hopefully uh, I've been meaning to have a retreat maybe in like some warmer place. <laughs> during the summer or something or winter would be nice too but um, we'll see when it's allowed to like travel again so that's been put on hold but um fly camp is like something we're trying to definitely do more of um now that things are opening up so just stay tuned it's coming <laughs> all right so stay make sure you like your instagram page and Lamin's as well, I suppose. And I just, yeah, just keep yeah, your eye on when things. <laughs> follow the journey and stay posted. So what's next? What's next for Kaya? Uh, oh, that's, it's many, like, few things in the making right now. Um, I have, I'm not sure if I can say, but it's, uh, I have an ebook, uh, which, um, I'm doing a kind of a collab with some other great um, influencers and we're doing a kind of a um, yoga bundle, which will be um, coming out soon in, in October. And um, yeah, there's more collaborations going on and uh, working on my climbing, <laughs> <laughs> some more artwork coming. And hopefully a uh, retreat coming soon. It sounds all very exciting. Like there's a lot coming. Yeah. All right. So I think it's about time for the 10 in 10. So I've worded you up on this. We got 10 quick questions. This is what I end every episode with. Uh, yeah. You've got 10 seconds or less to answer each question in. Although it's oh. the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> and 
it, I mean, we're not too strict if you go over 10 seconds. <laughs> um, all right, you're feeling up for it? Yep. Okay, let's get into it. So this is stuff that I've been taking notes on as you've been talking. So our first one is the first thing that comes to mind when you think back to that time when you picked out that yoga book as a young girl. Oh, the first thing? Yep. Um, just, you know, I want to be that girl in the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and you're achieving it. You're like, you yeah. are the girl in the pictures on Instagram. That's so cool. And Instagram probably didn't even exist back then. No. <laughs> uh, the similarities between yoga, gymnastics, and dance. Oh, um, I'll say flexibility, balance. Yeah. Number three, Instagram. Oh, community. Um, grateful. <laughs> Number four, art. Oh, um, so much to say, but just, um, yeah, being creative and just it's a mindfulness technique to just zoom out from everything digital and just be in the moment. Number five, being vegan. Um, I would say uh, animal rights and saving the planets and so yeah, for planet. N yeah. Number six, making salads. Uh, <laughs> something I do almost every day. <laughs> Seven, yeah. travel uh uh it's such a great way to uh, discover the world and yourself as well i think you learn so much from other cultures and seeing other places so yeah highly recommended number eight the best thing about yoga mm, learning about yourself number nine teacher training um it was like the um, kickoff, I guess. It's um, useful, like um, education, yoga education. So it's um, it was a wonderful experience to to be able to do it outside the country as well. So it was like travel and yoga, everything, and vegan food, everything I love all at once. <laughs> and, and photos. And photos, photos in Thailand um, in the tropical um, <laughs> A great way to be creative, I would say. Awesome. Okay, number 10 is a question which I ask everyone and it's a little insight into the crazy way my brain works. And so this one is you can go forward in time or back in time. You can, it's like time traveling. So you can come back to now. Some people get caught up on that. And they're like, oh, I don't get stuck in the future or the past. But, and I think this is quite topical too because we, I'm here, what, 12 hours ahead of you. So it kind of feels like I'm in the future a little bit. Um, <laughs> As the sun's starting to set, while the sun's starting to go right above you, um, yeah. if you could go forward in time or back in time, which would you go to, and like what what point and why? Mm. I think um, I prefer not doing that. <laughs> um, for me, it's uh, it's like yoga. It's very much about being in the now in the present and that's something that I work on like every day to not go too much back or forth just staying in the present moment because you can't really change anything in the past and you can't like predict the future so it's just no point you know being in that like headspace where you're you can't change or do anything it's it's not I feel like it's not good for me anyhow. So I just, I prefer to stay in the present as much as possible. <laughs> that is such a perfect answer and I wouldn't expect anything else. I actually thought about this before we recorded and I thought, I wonder how she's going to answer that question. She's probably going to say in the now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kaya, thank you so much for being on the Mind Your Body Show. How can people connect with you? How, what did you say how can people connect with you where can they find you oh you can find me on the instagram yoga kaya <laughs> <laughs>
yoga underline k-a-j-a yeah that's where you cool. find me and of course they, they can head out onto websites and all sorts of things and um and all that yeah, kind of yoga stuff dot com as well awesome yeah. Okay, I want to acknowledge you for all the work that you do, spreading joy and veganism around the world with your oh. beautiful pictures. And uh, thank you for being a guest on the Mind Your Body Show. Oh, thanks for having me.